Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes, it is time for the final round of Grand Arena. Um, so this one I'll just show you all the battle against my opponent and also show the final result. But first, you know me, I like my feats. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we still have to go after. Obviously I need to do more here kills with either Vader or Anakin to work towards the Chosen One feat. However, the Dark Lord of the Sith is out of reach for me because I'm probably still about a one year away at minimum from uh, Lord Vader. Um, but anyway, let's have a look at my opponent for today, the Big Lebowski. Uh, he's a part of the guild, the Order of Revan. He's got Master Kenobi. He's got Executor. So let's go ahead and see what the rest of his uh, Galactic Legends look like. So he's got four Galactic Legends, same as me. However, he does not have Rey, whereas I do not have Master Kenobi. So we are quite on equal ground there in terms of Galactic Legends. Now his GP though is like 400k lower than mine, so I do have slight advantage there in GP. And let's look at his ships as well. So now even though here it does show that he does have Executor, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think he had it before Arena Lock, uh, Grand Arena Lock, because when I checked his him a couple of days ago before this round started, he did not have Executor yet. So, I'm, you know, I'm pretty safe here still. Uh, I don't think he has it. Uh, okay, so here we go. Let's have a look at the board. Now, he did not attack yet, so I will not go through my defense yet. I'll do that now, then, in the end of the video, after he's done his attack. So let's first review what he placed on defense for me. So we got General Skywalker team there uh, up top. And then we got IG Grievous Nuke squad there. Okay, that'll be interesting. Uh, Phasma, now this one actually is Zeta lead. So putting Phasma on defense if you do not have Zeta on her, you know, it's not a good. But you know, with Zeta, they can do some damage there. And then finally, we got Night Sisters, Tal's in lead. Oh, with Nest. Now I don't often see any more Night Sisters with Nest. So I won't be using my troopers there, we'll have to do something else. Alright, let's look at the bottom then, what we've got there. Of course he put his Master Kenobi, but unlike one of the previous rounds where I faced Master Kenobi with Padme, this time I'm pretty much facing a full-on uh, Kenobi squad, however instead of General Skywalker, because as you've seen he's in the top zone on defense, uh, they do have Shakti, so I'll probably just use my standard Master Luke lineup that I use in Arena to counter Kenobis, because I would imagine without guessing there, you know, this should be easy, although, you know, Shakti, she can heal up and things like that, so we'll see if she complicates things or not. We also got a little bit better Geo squad than, you know, your average player in my GP would have. Usually we, we all just have Brood, right, like everybody else is gear 12, uh, so in one of my previous rounds, um, I used Vader, so maybe we'll do Vader again here. And then we got Bounty Hunters, Relic Bounty Hunters, always scare me. Um, there we go, let's look at the Master Kenobi's mods first. We'll do this battle um, first to begin with, because you know, if this one goes downhill, <laughs> then this uh, final round could be decided very, very quickly. Because by the looks of it, uh, my opponent went pretty light on defense, just relying on uh, his Master Kenobi, obviously, to hold. Uh, one battle or two uh, But you know hoping that my master look here team will still work very well He does also have relicate on commander Soka Tano So those ones are a little bit tankier. So hopefully we can burn through her fast enough before she causes too much trouble and finally relic 7 Shakti I don't know, you know Shakti she can give them offense up on basic keep healing them. So we'll see so this is my, just my standard Master Luke team. I use in Arena this team every single day, uh, at least five, six times, climbing uh, through Arena on my way to the top. Um, so, you know, I think we should be good here. Um, actually slightly, uh, but after my Arena lock, I actually slightly tweaked the speeds. I made gas a little bit slow, a little bit uh, slower there than Luke Skywalker. So this is just because of the turn meter swap that I can get a mark with Revan uh, before Gas gets his turn, so I get, you know, an extra hit uh, on Commander Sokatano. Alright, but for now this will have to do, they go first, going after Gas, that's how it is. Uh, let's go ahead here, increase cooldowns on Kenobi, now we can swap turn meter with Luke, get Mastan out, uh, spread those buffs. Now it was a, even though it was a Relic 8 Commander Sokatano, it was a slow one, so my Revan was able to go before her. So no force sleep 
Uh, we can now go ahead, mark her, and keep hitting her. There we go. All right, come on, big hit. Come on, there we go. All right. Okay, so there comes Shakti with the clients. We'll see if that will a little bit complicate something. But for now, let's just keep going after Ahsoka. Oh, man, these relicate Ahsokas are beefy. Ah, oh, they go for a big hit. There we go, come on. Oh, it wasn't a critical hit, I'm afraid. Come on, Yoda. There we go, we got through their uh, mini savior sort of ish. Oh, she's in the red, almost got her. And that's for the moments where I wish that my Master Luke would be at least Relic 7. Because, you know, then the, this uh, damage from uh, his um, leadership special ability would be doing a little bit more damage. Because at Relic 6, sometimes, you know, versus his beefy Ahsoka, I'm just a little bit short to finish her. But anyway, I was able to get her out um, before, you know, she could do much else, recover more health. And now it's really just a case of cleaning up here. Uh, I mean, one good thing about not going up against, you know, uh, Master Kenobi's with gas, you don't have somebody that can potentially increase cooldowns on your team, and also your attacks out of turn can then critically hit, but obviously whenever you do uh, burn through their bonus protection, that is. Uh, so definitely these teams without gas are a little bit, I think, easier to take out. But still, as you know, you have to respect Master any sort of Master Kenobi lineup. Uh, these guys are really, really tough. There we go. Getting into ultimate now. So now we'll be able to um, ignore the taunt. I'm not sure. They just want to go after Kenobi now. Go after Shakti. Um, let's spread some buffs. Uh, do you know what? Let's just go after Shakti now. So we get rid of her healing, dispelling, and retribution and things like that. Obviously, every time you get a chance. Uh, you do have to increase cooldowns on Master Kenobi just to slow him down a bit because you know his healing immunity uh, special ability has only two turn cooldown so he can very quickly reapply it on your uh, General Skywalker he's always uh, programmed to go always after him obviously here in Grand Arena you do want to keep him alive for those extra banners uh, now his ability blocked so actually I will save the Ability that increases cooldowns for the next turn. All right, there we go. Almost got him. Come on, Yoda. What you got for me? Big hit. Oh, nice. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and increase his cooldowns. All right. But he went into ultimate anyway. So ultimate, obviously, you can't increase cooldowns on the ultimate. Okay, mark him down. Come on. One more hit. Come on. Who's gonna do it? Guess. No, not quite. Yoda. Yep, there we go. Oh wow, so 58 banners, so that's pretty good. I think that was a little, uh, more banners that I got versus that Padme comp. So definitely this one wasn't as threatening, so I'm pretty happy with 58 banners. Now, Bounty Hunters. These guys at Relic levels, they all, all give me a serious scare. Now, luckily in this one, no Django. Because uh, obviously Django can be a problem. He's usually a fast character, can hit very hard, um, but still, you know, if these guys do get rolling, <laughs> they have Mandalorian on there. If you watch one of my previous videos, <laughs> I had some troubles there. Um, I made some mistakes and I almost, you know, lost a lot of banners, but luckily Mandalorian went for my Ray uh, with his Disintegrate ability. I don't know why, but I won't complain. Um, because initially in that uh, round I actually wanted to use my troopers against these guys but I misclicked and I used the raid. Anyway, that's a story for another time. So this time I'm actually do bringing in troopers. Uh, because I said, you know, these Relic Bounty Hunters, if they get going, boss gets frenzied. They can get so many turns. They can very, very quickly trigger contract. And then once they get trigger contract, you know, obviously Mando can, can quickly disintegrate somebody, steal those banners away. However, with troopers... You know, you, sh you know, as long as you got decent mods on your troopers, you shouldn't have issues outrunning these guys. Um, and obviously, their Mandalorian is very squishy, so you can very quickly get that first kill uh, without any issues. Um, you know, even if it would be Relic, still Mandalorian is very, very squishy. All right, so just want to pick here who's the weakest, get him out, so you can then get your Terminator train rolling. All right, some all in here on Mando. 
increasing cooldowns, dispelling their grief from stealth. <laughs> there goes Mantle already. You have to take him out again, which means more turn meter. Let's throw down an AoE and another AoE here. Just basic there will do. Alright, keep going after Boba now a little bit. Get out Boba number one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bosk has high turn meter. Let's go ahead and mark him. Just in case he doesn't get a turn there with death mark, he's gone. And now we just down to Dengar. And there we go. Because, you know, I was thinking about uh, should I use troopers here or not? Because sometimes they are, you know, they are better versus Night Sisters as well. But because my opponent set Night Sisters with Nest, I'm like, well, it's a no brainer to use troopers here versus this boss team. Alright, so we got Geos now uh, left to clear. That we see what's uh, waiting in the back zone. 276, I mean, that's kind of average speed really for Brood Alpha, for a Relic Brood Alpha, so nothing too crazy here. Now, we all know that Vader used to work great versus Geos before he got nerfed. Um, and in one of the previous rounds, I went versus Gear 12 Geos, no issues there. So let's see if Vader can handle uh, Relic Geos as well. I mean, uh, Pogel there and Soldier, they're not Relic. Uh, but at least the other guys are so see you know if Vader can still comfortably win if he can then you know Maybe next time when we do get uh, relic geos Then I'll try Vader there as well So just kind of you know have to a little bit keep testing keep pushing the limits to see what Vader can or can't do uh, We're using Palpatine Lido obviously for the you know the, the turn meter train and then uh, you know, with the Force Crush, you begin with Force Crush, so you get kind of free turns there whenever you use Force Crush because of all the extra bonus turn meter you do get when you apply Debuffs from Palp's lead. Bring Invader for the damage, obviously, then Thrown for Fracture, uh, then, you know, swapping turn meter, recovering protection so that you can get away with full 60 banners. Get in here so we can control the situation. And finally, the reworked Royal Guard. He's a lot more useful now. He's really good, actually. Uh, I just bumped his speed a bit, a little bit before Grand Arena starts, so that he can get a turn quickly as well. All right, control the situation. Obviously, you do have to here deal with these counter attacks. That's why good to bring in Gideon and Royal Guard because Gideon, with his control situation, will put a taunt on your tanks. There we go. Oh, okay, that was a Gear 12 Geo. No surprises there. Keep going around. Let's do Force Crush on Brood because he's counter attacking. Alright, Spy, let's see if Relic Spy can go down. Yes, he can. Alright, cool. Good to know. So it seems like, you know, we'll still be able to, even a full Relic Geo team, we should still be able to handle them. Now, just a case of getting these uh, banners back uh, that Geobrute is trying to snipe from us. Um, you know what? I'll just fracture him so he doesn't counter attack. Sunfuck there, he counter attacks as well. <laughs> let's see if we can get a stun on him. Perfect. And then go after Brute Alpha now. A basic attack. Shock. Almost got him. Another stun. Resisted. Um, I'll just use basic here. Let's see if we can get thrown a turn so he can top up my Royal Guard. Which what I think should be now. Full 60 banners. Boom. There we go. Perfect. So Vader works. Looks like still very well versus Geos. Uh, I mean in one way. It's kind of sad that that's what he's come down to is like, oh, Geos, I'll use my Vader on it. Whereas Vader used to do a whole lot more stuff. But anyway, now let's have a look at the back now. Hopefully no Galactic Legends there. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay. All right, so that's where the the remaining uh, Separatist went that usually people put with Grievous. So it looks like my opponent's getting a bit creative here. Uh, you know, he put a slightly different Grievous team up top with the droids and then Newt with the rest of the droids. So we'll see how these teams will work and then, you know, oh, that Palm Mothma team could be tricky as well. Alright, now let's head over to the top now. Um, so we got his Grievous squad, we got General Skywalker. Usually versus Grievous I would just do solo Kylo, so I'm pretty sure this will still work. As long as I take T3 out first, luckily it's a you know low gear one, so I can just one shot it. Uh, because without him there, you know Grievous won't be getting all that extra damage for all the deb debuffs that uh, my Kalo will get applied on. Oh, there goes BB8. Yeah, no issues whatsoever. Um, but in one way, 
maybe this is a good strategy that my opponent has because you know is it a good grievous team or a bad grievous team more more, more or less you know you will always end up with the kind of same amount of banners so then probably that new team then is scarier uh, with those guys so maybe that's not a bad idea my opponent put together all right there we go 63 that's what's expected with Kylo Solo versus Grievous um, now for this general Skywalker squad let's check out the mods a bit uh, and I do have my Sif eternal left and what so I'll just probably do that because we know it works well uh, and it's you know usually we're like what 60 banner win or something like that uh, because as you've seen my opponent's gone quite light on defense um, I would argue his defense is lighter than mine apart from mostly Master Kenobi I did not put any of the Galactic Legends on defense uh, but in terms of, you know, other teams I put, mine are all kind of fully relict. Um, whereas his are, you know, he does have some gear 12 characters and putting Phasma on defense and things like that. So it looks like it's going to be an efficiency round. Now this is the final round. We both won first two rounds. So I'm pretty sure we are up against, you know, an efficiency quality player there. Uh, so we do have to try and maximize our banners as much as we can across the board. That's obviously here. Uh, Sith Eternal and what? Um, should do the job here. Um, I've seen like just doing Sif Eternal without Wad, but I don't know. From my testing, it can get close sometimes. Okay, here we go. Obviously, Tank Tech over on uh, Eternal. You link Gas, he's taunting, you don't have a choice. And, and Link Fives. And as soon as Jean Skywalker gets a turn he will just you know do his attacks and kneel down because he will lose all the protection uh, thanks to uh, Sith Eternal there ability for the linked enemies to keep losing protection there we go now John Skywalker just stays there kneeling down until you take all the clones out and then he will get up so in terms of you know John Skywalker uh, change I don't think it in impacts a whole lot this uh, Sith Eternal match uh, at all I think it actually in some way uh, it's more reliable it's easier because obviously when uh, John Skywalker does get up he can't increase your cooldowns he can't reduce your max health uh, all the cooldowns won't really affect much here because once you're an ultimate you can't heal anymore uh, there's only gas left so you can't use link so you would have used basics anyways but obviously it's good that uh, now John Skywalker can't reduce your max health anymore in case he does burn for your protection. So here obviously you do have to take fives out first because you know you don't want clones to get too upset here. I can link a uh, link now Rex, a uh, link Echo. All right, there we go. Doing some counter attacks now. With the Arc Trooper Stewart will be dispelling. I think it's now time that we relink the clones uh, to go into ultimate. Okay, and whenever we do get a turn eventually, there we go, we can go ahead, unload it, take care of the clones. Here comes General Skywalker doing his best, but boom, there we go. Just a casual basic for a nice 60 banner win uh, versus General Skywalker. Okay, there we go. Sub so top here, we got Phasma left and this Tiles in Nest team as well. Um, so let's maybe go to the bottom now, um, which probably is the next challenging team uh, here. Mon Mothma. Now I know those guys are only gear 12, but remember they've got POW. They got Hoth Rebel Scouts. So if those guys get going, oh boy. It's a turn meter train. And you know, all these guys have this extra what stat boost and sharing and things like that. So you know this wedge big combo they can do some big hits as well um, so what I'll try and do here I'll try to do Treya undersize and hopefully we can survive all those uh, attacks now luckily uh, as I'm showing you speeds you will see that my Treya uh, is actually faster than any of the enemies which will allow me to isolate Pao before they get to go and once you isolate him he won't be able to keep spamming uh, you know his uh, ability uh, and then as well keep gaining bonus turn meter so we'll stop their turn meter train and funny enough um, my tray was just like one speed faster than my mouth so I'm like okay great this will work now my son here he's even faster so I will not use his AOE to begin with because 
if I critically hit Biggs, Biggs will get 100% turn meter and then they can get their turn meter train rolling. So I don't want that. I do have Steve Empire Trooper as well for the free taunt. So there we go. First, I'm just using basic attack here. I don't want to trigger Biggs. There uh, we go. Just put a basic on POW. We can now go ahead, isolate him, target Nihilus to uh, increase, uh, to reduce his cooldowns. They're going to have to Treya. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Hang in there, Treya. Hang in there. Oh, big AoE. They got her in the yellow. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at this. Even without POW, look at the amount of turns and attacks these guys are getting. They're kind of slowly killing themselves with that, but still, man. Uh, let's see if we can get this guy out because he's dispelling. Nah, I gotta. Oh, they got Nihilus in the yellow as well. Oh, not. Nah, oh, got Nihilus in the yellow again. Come on, get him out. Oof. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, at least we got. Um, the summon trooper out so they can't dispel the taunt on uh, my Sith Empire trooper, do an AoE and there we go. Simpson, it was a win but it got scary there. They got Nihilus twice in the yellow, Treya in the yellow once. Uh, so I believe this would be Relic Pow, Relic Scout means they would have more offense around to share. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if versus fully Relic team this would work but 58 banners, Ooh, I'll take it. <laughs> And luckily they were slow enough, obviously that I was able to go first. So yeah, these Monomotham teams can be tricky. Alright, so we got Monomotham out of the way. Um, looking at this new team now, obviously the biggest worry here really is Django, because under Separatist lead he will start with his contract triggered, which means he'll have damage immunity for two turns and extra offense, and he can pretty much nuke a lot of characters there, uh, obviously being at Relic 7. Uh, the other droids don't really worry me too much, to be honest. Um, uh, because, you know, without Grievous, these droids aren't really that scary. But obviously, there can be a lot of uh, banner sniping here with all these AoEs and uh, B2 gaining bonus turn meter. You can get stuck behind a taunt on Magna Guard, where Django, you know, is putting big hits on your guys. Newt is sparing extortion. Um, so definitely, this team will snipe some banners away, that's for sure. Um, the only question is, is it better to do it like this, to put these like good separatists with Newt and some trash droids with Grievous, is that better way? I don't know. Um, it's definitely a slightly different way, you know, throw a little bit different teams against your opponents to confuse them. So I'm like, I'll take my Padme in, hopefully, all the bonus protection up um, that we are getting will be enough to survive all those big hits from Django, really. Um, and because I completed, you know, the Padme, Qui-Gon, 3 PO feet in round two, I can now actually take in a proper Padme team here against these guys. I don't have to like, you know, really try to skimp on anything here. Fifth one, I had Shakti here still available. So I just thought, you know what, I'll bring in Shakti, uh, you know, for the heal. And, you know, she can also hide either a Sok or Anakin in stealth in case you know, Django puts a big hit on them so they can survive. All right, here we go. We go first. Unfortunately, Django is in damage immunity, so maybe just start going after B1s. Like from GOTB, I'm just used to the Shakti double tapping <laughs> B1s on her basic. I always expect her to double tap, and I'm like, and then I realize, oh wait, this is not GOTB. She will not double tap them. <laughs> but anyway, we got protection up here. Uh, do I smash it? Do I smash it? Ah, mm, it wasn't enough to take B, B2 out though. Oh boy. Well, maybe bringing Shakti wasn't the best idea here uh, because of her counter attacks there. Although she did dispel Taunt on Magna Guard, so that was useful. Let's hide Ahsoka in stealth so Django doesn't blast her. Uh, I'll just do a kick into B2. Get him out. There we go. So with B2 out, we should be now able to build up courage faster because he can't dispel our protection up. Here comes the AoEs, assists. Uh, let's heal up Anakin actually because he's out in the open. Uh, I misclicked there. I wanted to really put retribution up. It happens. <laughs> anyway, I think we're still good here. Keep going after B1 so we take away their healing. We will have to go after Django at some point. Good thing about this Padme team here, obviously, with having Ahsoka in there, 
even when you do cleanse off extortion, at least you don't waste a turn, right? Because Ahsoka will come for an assist. There we go. Let's go after Django now. Um, just gonna use basic to finish off Django there. Here comes more extortion. Uh, okay, fine. Let's just cleanse off. Get rid of the extortion. See if we can get another heal there from um, from Shakti. Maybe if we can top up protection on somebody. I don't know. So this one I'm trying to do now. Just delay here. Um, let's see if we can top up Kenobi. Uh, didn't quite get him, but anyway, now Newt uh, sniped more banners from us. So it looks like we're looking at 55 banners here. So, you know, this is definitely a good new team, I think, to snipe a lot of banners. So maybe that's 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 quite a good approach here from my opponent. Because if you use these droids versus Grievous, I would still get 63 there. And then probably any sort of weaker new team, you know, probably would be like 57 instead of 55 banners. So maybe that's a good way of splitting your Separatists. Not bad at all. All right, then we got this uh, Leia team here. So I'm just uh, bringing in Bastila. And the reason why I'm bringing this Basti because, yeah, right, these guys, they've got AoEs and stuff. Um, so they can, as well, quickly snipe some banners away from you. So with all this bonus protection you do get from Basti Lalid, you have a lot of wiggle room there to protect your banners. Then further bringing in her Meteora for extra healing, extra uh, protection recovery. So hopefully we can walk away here with 60 banners. And obviously we got Julie there, he can call assists. And then I used to use Ezra here, now finally I have Relic Yadi, he's only Relic 1, um, so, you know, I will Relic him up to maybe Relic 5 when I get a chance, but until then, Relic 1, can, he can still do some big hits once you put all the buffs on him, and his basic does double tap, so he's definitely a good character to have. Um, when you have a chance, there we go, um, probably want to go after Captain Han first. Because he can revive and stuff like that. So let's just get him out. One hit. Two hit. There we go. Um, do we go after Ben? Just put a hit in Ben. Because, you know, uh, he'll, he would taunt or something. Anyways. Mind tricks with my old, old, own old Ben. So they can't use their special abilities here. Alright. Just mini heals here. We can save the big heals for later. All right, get a taunt up. Uh, he's got a big hit in R2. Ho oh, ho, oh, there he goes. All right. Um, well, old Ben, he'll taunt anyway, so I'll just go after him next. Perfect, another ability block, so he can't use mind tricks. Let's get four set up, because an AoE is coming from Leia in a moment, so we can dodge that. There we go, perfect. Uh, so we don't need to worry about AoE anymore from Leia, she just wasted it. We just go after old Ben now. Get him out, call Kiari for an assist. Uh, not, a, not as impressive without offense sub there, but still, you know, double tap is nice. There we go. Yeah, they got some buffs, but that doesn't really matter. Now we got only the Leia duo here to take out. There we go. Alright, come on. You can do this, guys. We're looking good with banners. There we go. Ah, Force Iron Leia. Let's get rid of that. Uh, big hit. Oh, it wasn't critical hit, unfortunately. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a stun. No stun. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Nice 60 banners there. And now we can go ahead and move back over to the top zone where I think we've got what the thousand nest squad right to finish off and phasma uh, so we'll see what we can do there to get some high banner wins because remember my opponent seems like he went very light on defense um, so definitely going to be probably a banner pinching match here all right um to go after Phasma team first, I guess. I mean, this Phasma team, you know, if you let them use their AoEs, assists, and everything like that, they can snipe some banners. So we'll definitely want to keep them under control if we can. Uh, we go. And also, this is uh, Zeta and Phasma, so they will start with advantage uh, the battle. And when they do have advantage, you can't critically hit them. And also, because of Zeta, 
uh, they will have 60% chance to call an assist anytime they use an ability. So if they get going with their assist, you know, the pilots can hit hard. Executioner, Feeding Termeter, Kylo Ren, Feeding Termeter. Um, here I had my, my Mon Mothma team left. I wasn't sure what will happen, right? Because if OG Kylo gets loose, um, he could be in trouble, right? Because every time you heal him, he's getting what? Like stacking offense, stacking defense. He's getting extra speed or something, right? For the debuffs. So at some point he's going to take a turn. <laughs> and he can do a big hit on you. Um, so I wasn't quite sure. Um, but, you know, thanks to having healing immunity and ability blocks with Cassian. And as well, days with K2. Uh, we can stun him with Hoth Scout. So hopefully we can keep him under control. Uh, let's first push back Termeter here on everybody. Uh, call our trooper here to help us out. There we go. Give me a stun. Oof, no stun. I don't like it. Give me ability block. Come on, Cassian. Give me no ability blocks. Oh boy. And no healing immunity as well. Well, we'll just keep playing through Kylo. Let's see. <laughs> Look at the low damage we are doing. At least give me a daze. Oh, there we go. At least we got a daze. Come on. There we go. Got daze. We got healing immunity. But I really need stun and an ability block as well. I don't want him to take a turn. But he will get a turn in a moment because of all that extra speed from uh, debuffs now. Come on. Get me an ability block. Ugh. Still no ability block on Kylo. Are you kidding me? Come on. Ooh. Did you see that big AoE? Yeah, yeah. You don't want Kylo loose, that's for sure. But, you know, we do have days on him, so luckily he won't be able to gain turn meter. Just keep going for Kylo again. Uh, push back turn meter and Phasma. Perfect. Oh, do you know what? I'll just heal up now. I don't think I will need a revive. I'll just heal up because if Kylo gets another AoE, he potentially could take out Scout or somebody. Still no stuns. Still no ability blocks. Come on. No healing immunity. Come on, give me something. Oh, finally we got there now. Uh, all the debuffs on Kylo. So let's just go ahead. Come on, get him out, get him out, get him out. Okay, luckily he had ability block. So no AoE is from Kylo. Perfect. So with Kylo out of the way, uh, this team is not as threatening anymore. And you can just pretty much hit auto here. And wait for AI to finish the battle for you. And you will get nice 60 banners here because obviously... Mon Mothma, she will keep healing everybody up with her basic uh, when she's calling for assist. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I was a little bit worried, that's why I didn't know what to do here. Do I use my Mon Mothma or not, just because of OG Kylo? And if you've seen, <laughs> OG Kylo is a handful if you don't like a land ability blocks on him and healing immunity. But anyway, we got him out. And from here on out, the battle is pretty straightforward. Okay, perfect. All right, there we go. Another 60 banner win. Hope, hopefully this will be enough, these 60 banner wins that I'm getting now, that I don't need like undersizing or something like that. Because you've seen my opponent, he's got three Galactic Legends left for offense. He's got Jedi Revan, Darth Revan, he's got Vader, he's got Troopers. He's got pretty much everything. Ray Jedi training even, right? He's got everything left for offense. So we'll see, CLS also. Um, so versus these Night Sisters, I do have my, my own Ray left. However, concern was here. How do I get around Zombie Taunt? That was my main concern here. But luckily, like Talzin and Asajj are gear 12, so is Nest. So hopefully we can work around the Taunt. Uh, so what I decided in the end here was to bring in just Ray and Poe. And why Poe? Because uh, when uh, his Taunt ability can put buff immunity. So if he gets his taunt up and puts buff immunity on zombie, then that's how I'll be able to get around the taunt. Um, so hopefully that will stick. We'll see. I do have some potency on my Poe as well. Uh, I can show you the mods. Uh, he's also fast enough uh, to get that uh, taunt up quite early. Plus we're getting plus 30 speed there from Ray's lead as well. Uh, and as you've seen, those Nazis aren't super quick. Uh, so hopefully we can get this out quickly. There we go. 273. I've got some pot decent potency on him. 80. 2%. So come on, Poe. Give me buff immunity. Come on, buddy. Let's get love blood going. Give me buff immunity. Come on. Well, at least he got exposed on almost everybody. Alright, because now I'll be stuck behind the taunt here. 
Okay, okay. Come on, do it. There we go. See, but that would be Relic Asajj or Relic Talzin. They wouldn't be defeated there by Whirlwind. And obviously enemies defeated by Whirlwind, they can't be revived. Oh man, Poe, all I needed, you were brought in to do one job here, and that was to put buff immunity on zombie, so then I could get a clear shot at Daka. But no, I'm stuck behind zombie again, oh boy. Let's just do basic now. So yeah, just using basic now from Ray, so hopefully she can get her health back to recover some banners. Um, not sure I'll be able, there's no way I'll be able to recover all the health though on Poe. Um, because I don't have any healing ability here, really. Uh, and obviously that plague ignoring protection. But anyway, let's knock out Nest. Um, Daka keeps stun locking my Poe. Uh, here we go. Alright. Still no buff immunity. Come on, Poe, what's wrong with you, buddy? Is 80% potency not enough for you? Because if I take Daka out, she'll just get back saved by the zombie, right? Um, okay. Well, we'll just have to, I guess, burn through these two zombie revives and then we should be good to go, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's no way I'll get full banners on Poe here. <laughs> uh, nah, I don't think Whirlwind will take out uh, Daka. I need a clear shot at Daka. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So now we just have to go for zombie here and we should be good to go. I'll just go into ultimate. Get it on. Oh, oh now you land the buff immunity. Poe, now you land buff immunity when I don't need it anymore. Oh, jeez. Anyway, 62 banners. Maybe if I would have landed that buff immunity, I could have got caught in 63. But probably not, because Plague would go through Poe anyways, right? So just the battle took longer than it should because Poe was not able to land buff immunity in turn one. All right. So far, we're looking quite good with banners. So let's look at the ships. Um, as mentioned before, I don't think he has executor yet for this uh, week of Grand Arena. Um, so we got just a standard Akbar fleet here. So we got gear 12 on Akbar. Obviously, relic both Han and Chewie, of course. And then relic big. So yep, so just a standard here lineup. Luckily, no beast down here. So this is uh, going to be a cakewalk for my finalizer fleet. I'm bringing in Gauntlet, um, even though you've seen very low gear pilots on my Gauntlet, because uh, sometimes if you know if you want to recover some banners, you can bring it in as a reinforcement to recover some protection and things like that. This pile of debuffs most likely won't need it against this lineup without uh, B stand, but you know, you never know. Dodge here, dodge there, and suddenly you might be in trouble of losing somebody. I'm bringing in Clone Sergeant um, as a tank. Usually, I like to bring in. Um, the first reinforcement tank. Uh, so when they usually do bring Phantom in, that Phantom can, you know, take out one of your Tie Fighters because you know Phantom can do a big hit with all those buffs when she reinforcements. All right, here we go. This, you know, how this goes, guys. Very standard stuff. You just put a Hunted over on Falcon. Uh, basic. Get a stun, hopefully perfect. Call an assist. Boom, boom. There goes Falcon. And then you want to go ahead, ability block Y-Wing here, so it can't disable protection on one of your ships so they can stay alive. They're going after a TIE Fighter here. So let's just go ahead, booster meter on everybody. Big hit on Y-Wing. Unload an AOE now to recover health. Um, bringing in, as mentioned before, Clone Sergeant as the first reinforcement. Because I'm pretty sure Phantom will come here in a moment. And, you know, Phantom can do some big hits, especially, you know, can knock out one shot your TIE uh, fighter there. Okay, there we go. We're stuck behind bigs now. That's fine. Let's keep working. Keep pushing. There we go. Almost got him. Come on, Kylo. Let's go. Boom. Perfect. Basic here. And there we go. So it's good for 65 banners. Perfect. So that's it. Probably we didn't need that reinforcement, but I just like to have a little bit of cushion just in case things go, you know, wrong. Like I said, dodge here and there, and who knows what they would bring in as the next reinforcement. Uh, going up against uh, this um, uh, Empire fleet here with Tarkin. Uh, actually, with this lineup, um, Tarkin is weaker uh, than Chimera, actually. Because, you know, they don't have the healing, you don't need to worry about that ultimate going off and things like that. 
So if you do run Tarkin like I do, just start off with like, you know, full tank lineup, not Vader and uh, TIE Fighter, because they're just too squishy. And without Chimera being able to heal them up, you know, you'll just finish off very quickly them. Just bring in again against, you know, just my standard here, uh, negotiator lineup. If you watch my videos, you know, you know how this goes. Uh, again, probably don't need that second reinforcement, but hey, you never know, RNG can happen. Um, you know, if they bring in Sith Bomber or something, because this is the first reinforcement, battle can drag out, can snipe some banners. So definitely, you know, I just want a little bit of safe net there to have another reinforcement. There you go, you want to tap TIE Bomber first, so that it wastes its uh, AoE dispel, so then it can't remove Valor when you apply it. Perfect, finally got a target lock on Vader, unfortunately did not crit, so Vader survived that AoE there. Um, go, bring in Implo just to, you know, clean up, clear up all this mess. Uh, give a nice Termiter boost, smash an AoE, perfect, Vader's gone. Uh, let's finish off their TIE Fighter. Okay, they're bringing another reinforcement now. Ah, TIE Shuttle. Oh. Mm, this buff immunity, I don't like it. Anyway, let's put a Taunt top over on Y-Wing. Uh, we are stuck behind TIE Bomber now. Keep going after TIE Bomber, because um, Shuttle's got Retribution. And there you go, that's what I said, you know, it's good to bring a second reinforcement here, because now we can keep feeding Termiter over to Anakin. Uh, unfortunately, because of the buff immunity, Anakin lost Valor, so not ideal scenario here. Uh, let's now top up here uh, Y-Wing, so we can recover the banners here. Uh, he's still got Retribution, let's just do basic now. There we go, big AoE. Boom, perfect. And there we go, so we got full protection on everybody, so big win here for 68 banners. Alright, so I was able to full clear here, one shot, no issues whatsoever. The defense was quite light for my opponent, so I'm definitely expecting an efficiency match um, when he attacks. Uh, let's have a look at the feats progress here, um, after the fun around here in week 1. Alright, so I'm almost there with the chosen one, so just need few more uh, there, and I should be good to go. And also making good progress towards the undersized feet as well. And let's have a look. Uh, what my opponent did, so looks like it was a win, so let's go ahead and review the board, see what happened there. Um, what? How is this possible? He had three Galactic Legends, CLS, Ray Jedi Training, both Ravens, Troopers, and you know, still some other teams. Okay, he two shot my Revan, okay, it happens, I'm not sure what he tried, what kind of team he tried versus my Revan, but... Let's look at the back, he was just able to take care of CLS, then lost versus Rex. Didn't touch the Hux team at all. I'm really curious to see the GAC history, what happened there though. Maybe his game crashed or something, I don't know. He one shot all of the guys up here but then got stuck on my night sister, so he didn't even get to fleet on. oh wow. Like I said the, de the same defense in all three rounds and you would think that in the final round it would be the toughest and closest match, right? Because my opponent, he won his first two rounds as well. But actually it was the easiest win in the end. You know, I had a very high score on my end, so I was expecting high score on the enemy and he was just able to clear one zone. Okay, interesting. Well, I'll have a look at GC history whenever, obviously, it comes live in the next couple of days. Uh, but until then, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you find this video useful and helpful, showing you my final round here in week one in Grand Arena. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, have fun, enjoy life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.